Welcome to Board Game Casual Design Diaries, a series that focuses on content for aspiring board game designers and things I'm working on as a designer myself. In the previous video, we talked about the materials, tools, and methodology I use for making prototype cards. So be sure to check out part one if you haven't already, because this video is part two, where we're gonna talk about the different software I like to use to design the cards themselves and manage large decks for print. First and foremost, I'm all about keeping things cheap and using whatever I can that's free. I'm just a hobby designer and not at the stage where I'm forking out cash for software uh, as if I were doing it professionally. Maybe someday. Typically, I do two distinct stages of digital design. The first stage is basically my drafting stage or proof of concept stage, where I'm designing cards for print totally manually. If this is a big game with a lot of cards, I'm not necessarily drafting all of them, usually enough to get a feel for what a particular scenario or use case would be like. For me, it's a lot easier to draw cards out on a computer than by hand with pen and paper, ensuring straight lines and text that'll fit into the allotted space, for example. It also makes basic editing a lot easier if I want to change text or values or rearrange things around on the card. For example, moving the cost of a card from the bottom to the top. And of course, keeping a consistent layout across different types of cards. Believe it or not, in most cases, I'm doing this in Microsoft Word simply because it's the application I know I'm the fastest with. I can easily create rectangles and other shapes to the exact print size, adjust colors, borders, alignment, add drop shadow effects, add images, change fonts, and I'm very comfortable in their layer system. For you, this might be using Google Docs instead, Microsoft Paint, Photoshop, Illustrator, or maybe some free alternatives like GIMP or Inkscape. GIMP is basically a free alternative to Photoshop and what I'll use if I've got a more visually complex design with a lot of source images. Whatever your drafting program of choice is fine. The key, in my opinion, is using whatever you're the most efficient with, as long as it'll allow you to print to size. When I'm in this stage, I'm thinking about general card layout and common components that make up the card. These may be things like a card name in a box at the top, an image or symbol in the middle, and maybe a text box at the bottom. Then maybe other things like the cost of the card, class or suit, and maybe rewards or values of the card. Simple and clean is my MO here. Bordered rectangles and circles are great for organizing different pieces of information on the card. You don't need to be fancy or artistic. The most important thing is that it's easily readable and interpretable by your play testers. You don't need to sweat over finding the perfect gold coin icon to represent cost, for example, when a yellow circle with a black border will do Fine. Think about how the cards will be held in a player's hand. Will the player fan them out? In which case it may be beneficial to have key information along the left side. Will they stack cards into overlapping columns? In which case you might want the key info along the top instead. Hopefully you're using a program that allows you to quickly grab these elements you've designed and reposition them on the card. Start simple, you can always beef up the design and make them more artistic later on. The most important thing is getting something you can print so you can get your design to the table for playtesting. Now earlier I mentioned this as sort of a first phase in designing, but honestly, if I'm not dealing with a ton of cards, say 25 cards or less for the whole game, I may just continue in Word or maybe GIMP for the whole prototype. Once you're dealing with bigger decks, multiple versions of the same or similar cards, and several different value types and categories to keep track of, that's where it can become a bit difficult to manage manually, and it's time to move into what I call the deck management phase. Once you have your basic card layout drafted or an idea of what it'll look like, it's much easier to abstract the data into a spreadsheet, making everything easier to manage rather than having to edit cards one by one. Especially as you make changes and rebalance your cards based on playtesting later on down the line. And as a designer, you'll be doing this a lot. 
My application of choice here is Nandek. This is a totally free application created by a fellow game designer specifically for prototyping cards. The beauty of Nandek is that it allows you to manage all of your card data in your spreadsheet of choice. So for example, Excel or my preferred application, Google Sheets. And Nandek will then assemble all of your cards based on the data in your spreadsheet and the template you've laid out. So instead of making layout adjustments to cards one by one, you create a common card template just once. For example, a card with a name box, image, description box, cost, etc., and then map that template to your spreadsheet with all of the different cards you want based on that template. And Nandek will generate all of the cards in a ready to print layout based on your specifications. This makes it super easy to change values, reference images, icons, card names, backgrounds, quantity of certain cards in your deck. For example, maybe you started with four wild cards and you realized it would play better with 16 of them. Or maybe you wanna raise the cost of every type of resource card by 10%. All you have to do is change the values in the spreadsheet. Now that said, there's a bit of a learning curve to using Nandek, especially if you've never coded before. So it may seem a bit intimidating at first, and visually, its ability to layer and handle transparency and alignment is nowhere near as advanced as Photoshop. But it makes things so much easier during the prototyping phase, and keeps things so much more organized and streamlined for editing along the way, it's totally worth learning and getting familiar with. And did I mention it's free? So it only costs you your time. There are some great video tutorials on YouTube right on Nandek's site, which is primarily how I learned to use Nandek. I highly recommend following Streamline Gaming's How to Make Trading Cards Using Nandek tutorial line for line, and then playing around with it a bit so you can get the hang of how to control, map the different elements of the card. Honestly, if you're just starting out, you may even want to shape your design to fit into his template rather than trying to design totally from scratch, just so you can get the hang of it as quickly as possible. There's a lot of other great tutorials on YouTube as well that go into depth on mapping template and print adjustments. Another beauty of using Nandek is how easy it is to organize your cards for print. You have a lot of control over scaling and margins and paper size, especially if you're trying to fit as many cards on a sheet as possible with as little cutting as possible, or even just trying to find the right size of card that works best. The beauty of using Nandek and a spreadsheet is also how easy it is to do version control. You can keep multiple copies of your spreadsheet or multiple copies of your layout file or even alternative values and columns in the spreadsheet itself. And the beauty of using Google Sheets specifically is how easy it is to access anywhere. Since it's in the cloud, I don't even need my laptop with me if I need to make a change. I can do it right from my phone. Now, just like the draft and proof of concept stage where I mentioned I might not even move into Nandek and just stay in Word, the opposite is true as well. I've been getting so used to Nandek, if I've got a card heavy or data heavy idea, I might actually just start directly in Nandek. When a new idea pops in my head, I often find it easy to immediately start building a table with the different cards and values that I'm picturing. Again, ultimately in my opinion, it's all about whatever method is most efficient in getting something to the table where you can start testing and something that makes it easy to make adjustments along the way. So those are my two preferred methods for designing and managing cards for print. Microsoft Word or GIMP for the drafting proof of concept phase, and Nandek and Google Sheets for managing large or multiple decks of cards where I'm in the deeper stages of the prototyping phase. That said, if there are better, more modern options for designing cards, especially if they're free, please let me know. Once I got the hang of Nandek, I just kind of stuck with it for the past few years, but I'd love to hear what you're using down in the comments. And again, if you haven't watched part one, where I talk about physically making the cards and what tools and materials I prefer, be sure to check that video out on the channel. I've put the link down in the description below. And if you've got more general questions about tools for creating artwork, how to design vector-based icons from scratch, or the best place to source icons that are free to use, stay tuned. I've got some videos planned to touch on those subjects as well. In fact, 
What a perfect opportunity to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.